Today's episode is sponsored by Hire Suite. Hire Suite CRM helps talent acquisition teams hire more people by automating your outreach and nurturing your talent pipelines, allowing your talent teams to be a lot more productive. If you haven't tried Hire Suite, head to hiresuite.com and try it out for free. Welcome to Crafty Sourcer. If you're looking for a raw, unfiltered podcast on all things sourcing in APAC, you've come to the right place. Grab a coffee or wine and join your host and other guests as we dive deep into the complex and ever-evolving world of sourcing, keeping you informed on insights, tools, and even at times, a healthy sourcing debate or two. Now, here's your host, Denise Pereira from Kaleidosource. Settle in and let's get crafty. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of The Crafty Saucer. I have to say, so far, we have had some amazing guests come on the show and share their experiences and thoughts on sourcing. A couple of weeks ago, as you may know, I was actually at the Sourcing Summit, and as part of the second day, they hold a hackathon. Now, that hackathon was super intense. Everybody was nerding away at their laptops, you know, answering complex questions and showcasing their sourcing uh, sassiness. And I believe when we do the hackathon, you get about 30 to 45 minutes and everybody's competing against the time and making sure that they're number one. I didn't have my laptop on me, but I thoroughly enjoyed co-piloting with my friend Matthew Mercel Jr., who actually took eighth place. But he's not our guest today. Our guest today is a hackathon winner for Sourcing Summit 2023, Arch Petrosian. Arch, welcome to the show and thank you so much for joining us while I believe you're also on holiday. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm so much looking forward to our conversation, having listened to a couple of your podcasts. So, yeah. thanks, Arch. So, Arch, we always start the podcast. Uh, you know, I'm sure there are lots of people that know you, but for those that don't and who are listening to you for the first time, could you please give us a quick intro? Who is Arch, and and how did you sort of fall into sourcing or fall in love with sourcing? Yeah, uh, that's. Uh, I think that in that way I'm very traditional because I don't know anyone that uh, from my generation, uh, quote unquote, that uh, ended up in recruitment by uh, by planning. So I ended up in recruitment just by accident. So I was uh, a nerdy girl studying psychology, and I just uh, uh, was invited to maybe try out a job as HR HR lead uh, in a small company of uh, fifteen people. So I took the leap. I was very, very stressed, but I took the leap and I fell in love because recruitment had everything that I needed, basically. Tech and people, those are two of my passions, has always been. And uh, that, that turned out to be just the perfect uh, mix for me. But uh, during the half year, I was just one person department and I didn't have any uh, professional network around me in a way. I did have a lot of engineering network, but I didn't have just so I was just, you know, inventing the wheel from the zero and it felt very long. Uh, and at some point I started taking Python cl classes because I thought, well, maybe I will switch. Uh, why not? Uh, let's try something new. But uh, at those Python classes, I found uh, I met my uh, co-founder after that, uh, Narika Sukian. And uh, we were having this chat and he was like, mm, when your LinkedIn results run out, what, what is your plan then? And I was like, what 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 should be your plan? You just uh, you just go go do something else. I don't know. You just go to the. Uh, I don't know if you if you still have that feature uh, in your sourcing pipeline. But back then my sourcing was just to click profiles like this one, and that was uh, like ridiculous. That is not sourcing at all. And uh, uh, we we sat there, and it was like overnight falling in love into sourcing again. Because uh, he was showing me, you know, the basics of Boolean, how you can build it up, how you can plan for it, how you can, uh, you know, craft it better. So it was very interesting. And uh, next day morning, I was pumped again to to do recruitment, and that's uh, that's when we founded uh, the recruitment agency together that we 
run like six, six, six to seven years. And uh, yeah, recently I moved to Amsterdam as a senior tech recruiter at a, at a consultancy called Level Up Ventures. And that's what I'm doing. I'm helping startups in, uh, in European region right now, in Netherlands and in uh, UK. Before I had experience with US and Germany and uh, Eastern part of the Europe, but uh, right now my focus is more more on the you know Western part in the UK. So yeah, that's that's me. And uh, if I sum it up, my life motto is to keep on learning because I I don't know who I am without the learning. I love that Ish and um, the fact that you mentioned Python. So I'm not surprised that you won the bloody hackathon as well, right? So and the fact that you mentioned you know you you were doing recruiting as well. And I think this this next question is a perfect way to sort of segue into it is, you know, and and we sort of get asked this question time and time again. I, I don't know about you, but I definitely do. Is that in your opinion, like what are some of the key differences between a recruiter and a sourcer? And, you know, what value do you think a sourcer can bring to any organization now that you've sort of been in both shoes? Yeah, yeah, that's a very interesting question. And, um, I'm I'm feeling a bit old in that sense because when I was starting recruitment, uh, recruitment was in the exact same position, you know. No one was sure what recruiter was in the market that I was working on, and I saw this beautiful pattern of building up the profession in a way. So I see the same thing happening to sourcers because we talked time and time again about what is what is the source what is the difference but uh, it's still out there it still needs to be addressed so in my opinion a uh, sourcer is covering the finding part of the talent and also engaging part of the talent so basically sourcers and delivery in my opinion is to have a candidate ready to start the process so a candidate not a talent not a prospect not a potential candidate but a candidate and recruiter's role is to take that candidate throughout the process and uh, assess them and end up hiring. Uh, of course, it's mixed up in the different settings. If you if you have a really small team, if you are a very small startup, you do not have the luxury of having a recruiter and a sourcer separated. In that case, the sourcing function and the recruitment function will be on the same person. They will be called recruiter or found to something else. But I, I do think that this doesn't uh, counter the fact that sourcing and recruitment could be differentiated really easily. And uh, I think the iconic uh, iconic uh, article that the sources are not baby recruiters is still relevant. I mean, it was out, I don't know, seven years ago, eight years ago. We still are talking the same thing. I mean, the sourcer is not uh, to be grown to, to grow up and become a recruit, right? Because that's a different function. You might choose to change your field in a bit, but uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think you have to. That's what I'm saying. And when it comes to the value that sources can bring to the company, uh, I think it is important to know that when you specialize on something, you get bloody good at it. So if you source and source and source, you know your market, you know how to new, know a new market, you know how to assess the profiles right, you know how to approach people, you are crafting your engagement strategy, you, you know how to uh, reinvent your engagement strategy. Because in my opinion, engagement is all about staying relevant uh, and something that was very, very, you know, um, bringing good response rates and interest rates a couple of years ago, it's not the case anymore, right? Because People are changing, the contexts are changing, and the sourcer needs to change as well. So, yeah, I think uh, the sourcer's value is to bring this expertise on the engagement side uh, and uh, leaving the space for recruiters to focus on the assessment part, on the, you know, closing part. So. And that's a very interesting point you made. Um, and I think there was a debate going on a couple of days ago on, on LinkedIn, uh, Tibold actually put up a debate around, and Irina shared that as well, around, you know, the difference between a source and a recruiter. I'm not sure if you if you read about that. And I think this is a debate that's been going on for long. And as you said, our role has been revolutionized over the years, you know, and I think it comes down to curiosity and interest. And it's like, you know, we all started as recruiters and then we sort of branched out into becoming sources. We niched our way and we became more niche and, you know, enjoying something that we enjoy. At the end of the day, the one common thing between a recruiter and source is we are all about the people at the yeah. end of it. But what we've really niched out is into different parts of sourcing or different parts of the talent acquisition lifecycle. 
even if you take sourcing for, as an example, you're right, it is all about finding. But I've also started to see that people are, there are different facets or different parts of sourcing that people enjoy a little more than the other. If people are a little less technical, they enjoy candidate outreach, candidate engagement, candidate experience. If people are a little more technical, you know, probably like yourself, they like, you know, going and finding all those unicorns, those purple squirrels, those little ninjas hiding somewhere, uh, you know. Or if you look at the people that were traditionally researchers, they like doing all the research, all the front-facing part and bring that back into the business. So you're absolutely right. You know, at the end of it, recruiters, sources, we all bring some sort of a value as long as we enjoy what we do and we are passionate about it. We all bring some sort of value to it as well. So on to the and hackathon. Sorry, sorry, go on. Uh, yeah, I was uh, I was going to share this opinion that uh, I think the reason that we need to repeat this time and time again is uh, uh, something that I have, the visualization that I have in mind is reverse triangle visual, you know, because the recruitment effort the company cares about is at the end of the day, it's the hire. And the higher you get into that reverse triangle, the less obvious the effort is, because who shows the metrics of how many profiles you viewed to your stakeholder management nobody does but it takes a lot of time to source through those profiles and uh, i think that's that's the reason why we, we we are still having this conversation on why and how we should value the sources sorry i interrupt i agree and and you know to some context you're right we still have those conversations around what is the roi the sources bring in because if you do like um what is that thing they say where you do like this time time and motion study around on, on a day-to-day -day basis, if you were to look at what a sourcer does, it is very different to what a recruiter does because you can't really put a timestamp on exactly what we are doing. That's why when we look at metrics, our metrics are very different to what a recruiter's metrics are, and they should always be like that as well. It shouldn't just be based on the number of profiles you're bringing into the funnel, right? There's so many other things that happen around all of that at the same time. Um, let's get on to the hackathon. So... You won 2023. How does it feel wearing that crown on your head, first of all? Well, I was uh, I was very, very happy at the, at the moment of announcement. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just like that, you know. I, I just forget it uh, uh, the, the next day and on to the next challenge. So, yeah, but um, it was, uh, we, we had a team hackathon before and I was participating as an individual on the online ones. But this was my first uh, offline hackathon win. So I'm very proud of that. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. So, uh, but uh, you know, the way I feel, it's a mix of skills and luck. You are not just. Uh, it's not just on you. You need to be to get lucky as well. And I think everybody was so excited about the fact that um, the top three, including yourself, were all three women. So everybody was like cheering. I remember we all were like clapping. We were like, "Yay, girl power!" Right there. Now. You, besides winning uh, the 2023 hackathon, uh, you were also a speaker last year. So for anyone listening to this podcast or anyone in talent acquisition, what's one piece of advice that you would give in terms of, you know, staying relevant, technically evolving, making sure that we are keeping things at the forefront of, of our, our profession? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, everyone is subscribed at this point to recruiting breakfast, so I'm not going to say that, but uh, I just said it, so didn't I? So I want to highlight the fact that uh, we need to go down the rabbit hole of, uh, of, of anything in front of us, right? Because as the sourcer, as the recruiter, uh, you need to understand the talent, you need to understand a lot of keywords, and uh, me being in tech, uh, especially, you, you have just new technology coming up every week, and if you source for that, those people you hire for those people you need to know it and uh, my way of knowing it is just that there is no easy cut right you just go down the uh, the rabbit hole is it talking to your ai chatbot or is it just reading the wikipedia article and understanding every word of it uh, you know that's that's my advice uh not not to stay on the danger zone uh with the danger zone of understanding you know not understanding fully the terms that you use every day and uh, yeah just know a little but know it well i think that's uh, that's that's how i see things and uh, yeah that's my advice 
I think also it kind of gave me the analogy of um, Alice in Wonderland when she goes down the rabbit hole, when you said rabbit hole, and that's what I automatically thought. So sourcing is exactly the same, where you drink a portion and then you're trying to get out of one door and then you get stuck and you try to go out of another door. And sourcing is exactly that. You just got to keep banging down those doors. You drink some portion and you get stuck somewhere. We You get stuck, but you get unstuck. And I think that's the beauty of sourcing is you have to constantly be curious, be creative at the same time. You will find the solution to it, but you just got to keep trying. You just got to keep knocking down those doors, right? So, yeah. Yeah, continuing the analogy of Alice in Wonderland, you also need to run to stay in the same place. I think that's uh, that's exactly the situation because with AI especially, you need to run really fast. Yeah, uh, we have to keep staying relevant, like especially after I came back from Sourcing Summit and like Mark Hamill's talk, I don't know if you were listening to his talk, like I walked away and I was like, holy shit, there is all these different LLMs out there. Like I was like thinking of, you know, the matrix and all those little words and numbers out there. I was like, my mind was just full of that. I was like, there is so much that we still don't know about that's happening around us. And we are so clueless, not because we want to be clueless, but because everything is moving so fast and we just can't keep up. So yeah. again, you know, it's also about finding something that's fit for purpose. Don't just, and and we were actually talking about this on the podcast yesterday, was don't just dive into something because everybody else is diving into it. Make sure it's fit for purpose for your organization, for the problem you're trying to solve. Try out new things and then go in for something. Don't just do it because, you know, everybody's eating a new piece of ice cream and it tastes good. Just don't do it because it tastes good. You know, it has to be fit for purpose as well. Yeah, know the trend, but choose to follow it. I think that's that's the way to go. Um, Ish, one last question from me, and I enjoy really asking this question because it, it brings out some of the essence of what we face within sourcing. What are some of the common misconceptions about sourcing that you've come across where, you know, people have been like, oh, okay, so you actually do this and the recruiter does that. So what are some of those misconceptions that have come your way and how have you sort of tackled that? Uh, I think I will I will mention the the side of the hiring managers and stakeholder managers, uh, and that's not about misconception but uh, a mis exception expectation basically. So the hiring managers as well very often have this opinion that sourcers can create new talent, and uh, I think I think that that is something that I have seen a lot, uh, and I think it's powerful for the sourcers to be able to show the data and to tell. Tell the their stakeholder manager managers, look, this is a talent. Realistically speaking, this is our interests potential rate for this role, and uh, well, that's it. I I can't you know help bring new talent to the market. I can only work with the existing talent and the existing market. Of course, you can strategize, re strategize, go for different uh, niche sourcing, etc. You can do that. Uh, but uh, then at the end of the day, you are working with the existing uh, talent. Um, so yeah, I think that's one of the misalignments that I see a lot. And sort of just to throw a bit of a curveball in this conversation as well as when working with the hiring managers, sometimes they're not used to working with sources. They're so used to working with recruiters. What is the one thing that you've seen where they've gone like, whoa, I didn't know that. Working with a sourcer like yourself, you know, you obviously coming from a very tech background. What is the one thing where their eyes have lit up and been like, you've just changed my life? Hmm. I... I'm trying to remember a moment like that, and that be I'd be very happy to say, well, I'm having that every day, but no, no not the case. I I think I think what uh, what hiring managers have shared before with me is uh, the fact that they really appreciate when you when you when you can read the profile the way they can, and uh, every time that you sit with the you you source your experimental batch, for example, and you sit with uh, your hiring manager and you talk about the talent. And uh, I've seen them enjoy this conversation when you are very alive, when you know how to analyze someone's GitHub, when you know how to uh, how to connect or connect or you know uh, think through of their experience, like they have been on this field and then they moved here. This experience might be relevant. I think that has been uh, very uh, not mind blowing, uh, but uh, you know very eye opening uh, to build the trust uh, because I I see. A lot of hiring managers and stakeholder managers, managers coming to the conversation with uh, kind of a skepticism in their eyes, you know, not trusting uh, from the very beginning. I don't know why. 
I, I'm very curious why, because if they never had the experience, you would expect, uh, well, why would you expect the uh, the bad thing to happen, right? You would expect the positive thing to happen. So, yeah, at the end of the day, I think it's uh, it's really important to, to establish the trust and uh, that uh, alignment, that thinking the same with the same keywords, with the same patterns uh, is very important to establish that trust. And I think showing showing them the way how it's done is equally important as well, because then they realize that we are on their side. Because again, like when I've been part of sourcing functions, if they're not educated or the business is not educated enough about what the value of sourcing is, why that function actually exists and how they're going to work cohesively with the recruitment team, the business is going to be confused that why is there an extra set of hands and an extra pair of head? coming to the intake meeting with the recruiter, like why are they even there to begin with? So I think it goes back to that education piece. H, this has been a fantastic discussion and I'm so glad that, you know, you took out time from your day. I know, you know, you, um, you've been busy as well. So thank you so much. And for anyone who really wants to give a hackathon a go and anyone who wants to give Ish a, a run for her money, please reach out to her. We will drop in her LinkedIn uh, when we make this podcast live. Ish, thank you once again so much. And I really appreciate your time on this podcast. Thanks a lot for having me. I had uh, a really insightful conversation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Take care and everybody stay crafty. Bye. Thanks for tuning into this week's episode. And we'll be back next week with another exciting episode. If you found this valuable, don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. That helps others find the show and we greatly appreciate it. Once again, happy sourcing and stay crafty. Until next time.